Gaming phones, powerful chipsets, beautiful screens, and booming audio are just a few traits that make these handheld monsters worth every penny, and we are going to pit two of our favorites hit to hit. The ROG Phone 7 Ultimate is really that phone in the mobile gaming sphere. It's got the best thermal management I've felt with the Aeroactive Cooler 7, an external cooling fan that doubles as a gamepad, and the Aeroactive Portal that opens a flap on the phone to give the Aeroactive Cooler a more direct access to the chipset's heatsink. The sky's the limit when it comes to playing games for hours comfortably and without worrying about your phone overheating. However, the Red Magic 8 Pro, in my opinion, is one of ROG's biggest competitors. Having slowly moved up the ladder of gaming phone rankings recently, they too have their own air triggers and an inbuilt fan that actually works, which is pretty much a dream come true for anyone who doesn't want to attach an external cooler on their commute to work. Both phones are on even ground specs-wise because they both run Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processors, they both have Adrenal 740s for the GPU, 5G connectivity and stunning AMOLED screens. Before we get into it, this channel is supported by brands who help us improve our content and keep us going. So stay around for the sponsored message. If you're looking for a laptop that has both power and portability, look no further than the ASUS ZenBook 14X OLED. It features a large 70 watt hour battery and stunning Nano Edge 14.5 inch 2.8K 120Hz OLED display. Powered by the latest 13th Gen Intel Core i9 CPU and RTX 3050 GPU, all packed in a thin 16.9mm chassis that only weighs 1.5kg so you can stay focused at work or play. For more information, check out asus.com. The only difference specs-wise between the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate and Nubia's Red Magic 8 Pro is the more premium hardware in the ROG Phone 7, like its 32 megapixel front-facing camera. However, I do have some comments about the camera which we'll get into later on. With that being said, the key is still the cost of each device and the Red Magic 8 Pro offers the most bang for your buck as far as price to performance goes. The ROG Phone 7 and Phone 7 Ultimate cost US $1,100 and US $1,550 respectively. Note that the Phone 7 does not have the Aeroactive Portal and the Cooler 7 must be purchased separately. The Red Magic 8 Pro costs US $649. The ROG Phone 7 Ultimate has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, while the Red Magic 8 Pro that we have has 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and it runs Red Magic OS on top of Android 13. However, I do have my gripes with the Red Magic OS because as of this video, the Red Magic 8 Pro does not meet Google's security requirements for some reason, even though the previous Red Magic 7 does meet them. So you can't set up contactless payment for Google Pay for now. This is a deal breaker for some of you out there if you're in the habit of using your phone for wireless payments. The other thing is that the UI for the Red Magic 8 Pro is inconsistent with its language settings. Most of the time it's in English, but then you get bits of Mandarin here and there, and I can't change any of that in the settings, so I hope that gets fixed sometime soon. The ROG Phone 7 and 7 Ultimate here has a few key differences. As I mentioned before, it's the Aeroactive Portal and the additional Aeroactive Cooler. This might be the toughest buying decision for some as the extra cooling accessories do boost the gaming performance and experience overall. And I'd recommend getting the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate Edition right off the bat. Go big or go home, as they say. Let's talk aesthetics and build quality. They're both extremely sleek phones with two opposing design routes, with ROG having much more rounded edges compared to the Rip Magic and the inclusion of the customizable PMOLED screen, which has been one of the coolest things on the ROG phone so far. The Red Magic has lights on the back that are reactive to your videos, music, and games if you choose to enable them in the settings. I just wish the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate had an option for a black colorway like it does for the base ROG Phone 7, but that's just a me thing. Also, the other thing is that the front-facing camera is below the screen of the Red Magic 8 Pro, which lets its beautiful notchless 6.8-inch screen really shine. On the display front, the Red Magic 8 Pro runs 1116 by 2480 pixels, and for the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, 1080 by 2448 pixels. So you've got slightly more real estate on the Red Magic. However, in terms of refresh rate, you've got 120Hz on the Red Magic 8 Pro and 865Hz on the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate. Do you need an extremely high refresh rate for mobile gaming? Most gamers on phones are casual gamers and most games by default support 60fps. Unless you're slightly more hardcore, then you go out of your way to get PUBG running 90fps. And there are few games out there that actually do support 120Hz 
let alone 125 hertz. 120 hertz is more than enough without being super nitpicky about the subtleties of performance. They're both great looking displays and the games play out better than intended because they're gaming phones. Whatever you play, it's going to look and feel good. They're both very comfortable in hand with a good amount of real estate to get a grip around the phones comfortably. The ROG has a slight edge because of its rounded edges. It allows your trigger fingers to grip around the edges totally compared to the Red Magic 8 design. So that's a point to ROG. Also again, style points for the PMOLED display. I really can't get enough of that because it is such a great conversation starter in a room full of playing back phones. Don't get me wrong, the Red Magic 8 chic black tech shit back is classic. But the Red Magic 8 Pro Void Edition, on the other hand, would even the aesthetic playing field with its transparent back. Now, on to their gaming companion apps and performance. Before we get into the software, there is a bit of hardware that the Red Magic 8 Pro does differently, which is the inclusion of a dedicated slider on the phone for gaming that takes you directly into the gaming hub anytime. It's cool and the red adds a nice contrast to the phone, but ultimately it's quite the gimmick. The ROG Phone 7 Ultimate doesn't have that of course, but it has Armory Crate and the one thing ROG does slightly better in terms of gaming hubs is that Armory Crate categorizes games based on their supported refresh rates and if they support game pads. Performance. Obviously, the ROG with 16 gigs of RAM and 165Hz refresh rate would beat out the Red Magic on paper, but the reality is that they both play well regardless. Both phones allow games more space to perform better with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, giving slightly more performance headroom thanks to its larger RAM. If you want to compare numbers, we ran 3D Mark and Geekbench 6 benchmarks on these phones, so here are the results. It's no mystery that the ROG will be the cooler phone by 5 degrees thanks to its Game Cool 7 cooling system. However, I believe with the additional RED Core 2 co-processor on the Red Magic 8 Pro, the Red Magic is the most stable between the two phones. The ROG Beast may have started off stronger with higher numbers on the initial loops for 3D Mark, but Red Magic finishes the race with a higher and more consistent loop score. That's all for 3D Mark and now on to Geek Bench 6. Of course, the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate will blow the Red Magic 8 Pro out of the water with its additional RAM, so there's that. Gaming-wise, besides the attention to ergonomics that the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate offers, they both feel the same when it comes to performance. I haven't noticed significant frame rate drops with more intensive games like Genshin Impact or Diablo Immortal even during my playthroughs, which you can check out in our gaming test videos. Check the link in the top right for my thoughts on the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate when it comes to gaming. Now, with Armory Crate and Red Magic's Game Hub both prove useful to enhance the experience and so does Game Genie. It has a couple tools, such as Scout Mode which inverts the colors so you can spot enemies in games like Call of Duty more easily, but you can't use it in say Genshin Impact, so only specific tools are enabled for certain games. The Red Magic equivalent, however, has even more tools or plugins, as they are called, that can only be used for certain games as well, such as an auxiliary line, so you can set your character's attack ranges, heck, even a node segment so that you can review notes and tips and tricks while playing RPG games like Genshin, and so much more. Casual mobile gamers like myself won't really look into putting a crosshair on screen or enabling scout mode, but if you're into having a massive advantage over your online opponents, both phones possess the tools to wreck everyone in every way. Not to mention you have air triggers that are uber responsive, so you already have a huge advantage especially for FPSs. Not all phones are created equal, and if you have the means for an advantage, why not? The other thing to take into account is the inclusion of the Aeroactive Cooler 7 in the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate's package and its Aeroactive portal which allows for efficient airflow when the cooler is attached. The Red Magic 8 Pro of course does not have any of this, but it does have its internal cooling fan that can be set to an auto or maximum mode. Okay, just to show you that the fan actually does work, I'm going to be putting the microphone on the fan vent. That's the boot up sound and hear the fan. This is on its maximum mode. You're getting a more well-rounded package with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate off the bat. But in the case of the Red Magic 8 Pro, you could definitely just order one of their coolers or get a third-party external fan and a set of compatible triggers. More work for Red Magic fans, yes, but is it really a deal-breaker? Definitely not. So all in all, they're even on the gaming ground, to me at least. Now for the cameras, the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate has a wide 50 megapixel f1.9, an ultra wide 13 megapixel f2.2 120 degree camera, and a macro 5 megapixel f2.0. 
The Red Magic 8 Pro has a wide 50 megapixel f1.9 and ultra wide angle 8 megapixel f2.2 that also goes 120 degrees and a macro 2 megapixel f2.4 lens. On paper, the ROG beats the Red Magic, but with a real world test, you'd be surprised. On the main camera, a one time zoom on both of them, the focus on the Red Magic works better and the colors and details you get surpass the ROG. The ultra wides and longer or the higher zooms, the Red Magic being 0.5 times and 10 times, and the ROG at 0.6 times and 8 times. Both aren't great, but between the two, I'd say the ROG does a better job in these areas. That said, however, the ROG works better with low light, as you can see in these images. And with the macro, you'll get more detail of the ROG than the Red Magic. The Red Magic 8 Pro can go up to 8K 30fps, while the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate can go up to 8K 24fps. However, both phones can shoot in 4K 60 and 30fps. And they look pretty good! However, the Red Magic, well, stabilization is non-existent and I think even if you throw on a warp stabilizer, it won't look as stable. Lastly, in terms of audio, the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate takes the win because of its inbuilt subwoofer, which makes explosions and gunfire and pretty much everything that much punchier compared to the Red Magic 8 Pro. And I think I've covered pretty much all the points I needed to. It is a fierce fight between the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate and the Red Magic 8 Pro. Both of these phones are almost similar if not for the difference in the amount of RAM. And after considering all things, I really feel that the Red Magic 8 Pro would still be worth my money. If I had disposable income, I would definitely get the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate without a second thought. Not only because it is a more powerful and cooler looking phone, but because it is available worldwide and on major e-commerce sites like Amazon. However, the Red Magic 8 Pro is only available for shipping to 42 countries directly from Red Magic, and you can't find it on Amazon at the time of this video still, even though it's been released much earlier than the ROG. Having used the both of them as daily drivers, they both function from messaging people, surfing social media sites, and watching videos. But in the case of the Red Magic 8 Pro, the absence of Google Pay due to the presence of Red Magic's own OS that isn't Google certified is a deal breaker for me because I want to use contactless payment. And the sometimes odd placement of Mandarin that you can't change is a little bit jarring. Gaming phones have really come a long way and ROG nails it with every release. With brands like Nubia or Red Magic slowly rising up, it really does make it an exciting market to watch because you never know what new innovation in mobile tech is going to come around the corner. But the real question is, what do you think? If you could choose between the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate and the Red Magic 8 Pro, which would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to follow us on all of our socials right here to keep up with the latest news and content we put out. And if you like what you're watching, leave a like and maybe subscribe to us. It helps the channel a lot. If you want to see more stuff, check this out.